Good morning. I have got a lot to say and I do not have a lot of time to say it in. Um, it is like six o'clock in the morning, maybe 6.03, on August the 9th, Saturday, August the 9th, 2021. Um, I had an experience this morning of uh, pre-sentiment, which I recognized after the fact, but very, very shortly after the fact. Um, and then my immediate realization upon recognition of the fact that what I had just experienced was a pre-sentiment event. It was a very minor event, but it's enough to know, it was enough to convince me that it happened. Um, my immediate realization afterwards was that the reason why this is happening now is because, I'm sorry, let me, I got that backwards. This pre-sentiment experience is the reason why I've been spending all of this time and energy on puzzling out whether or not I have free will and determinism. Because before you embark on the process of developing or discovering your pre-sentiment, you need to have faith in your free will. Because free will exists um, in three-dimensional space with linear time. Okay, three-dimensional space with linear time is a valid perspective. It's a, it's a partial um, but accurate way to look at the world. It's, it's, it's relatively real. Okay, it's what most people experience. In normal space and time, um, three-dimensional space and linear time, free will is a paradox um, because you can experience free will, but you, if you look at like the logical arguments and math and stuff, um, predestination seems to make a lot more sense. So it, it's, but then when you, when you think, well, predestination makes sense. One, if you start behaving as if you're predestined, your life kind of falls apart, generally. That, that's been my experience. You feel like garbage. Um, and your life falls. You lose all your motivation. And you stop moving. That's the that's the interesting thing. Um, so, you're, so it, it, practically speaking, it, just, it simply doesn't work to believe in predestination. And... Well, the conclusion that I came to is that predestination is 100% true, but free will is also 100% true. This is a paradox. Now, the reason it's a paradox is because it's a part of our reality that doesn't fit, that you can't look at from here, okay? So whatever is going on with, with predestination and with free will happens outside of three-dimensional space and linear time. I mean, it, part of it might happen within, almost certainly happens within three-dimensional space, but there are dimensions to free will and predestination, which I believe is one thing bundled together, that happen outside of three-dimensional space and linear time. There's more to it than what we can see from here. So... But you can imagine that, okay, so you, so we know that your life starts to fall apart if you don't believe in free will. So we know that you must treat free will as real. So for practical purposes, it is real. Um, footnote, anytime you have a paradox, it means you have to go to a larger uh, system or more dimensional system in order to understand it. Two things that are 100% true but can't be true at the same time but are, that means that you've got to go outside of time to figure out why this makes sense. Um, that, that's my understanding of what a paradox is. Anyway, Alan Watts says that a paradox is like when, a, when, a, when flowing water finds, finds a wall. It can't go forward, so it has to go up. So, basically, 
the movement of water can be seen as two-dimensional until it hits a wall. And then as the water continues to flow in, it rises until... Anyways, that's not the point. So I basically, I've spent more time than I wanted to talking about free will because it's very important that you have faith in your free will before you move forward, okay? Because it's already been demonstrated in my life to me that if you don't believe in free will, your spirit, your mood, and your life itself start to degrade, like, pretty rapidly. Um, the only thing that kept mine together was just will. <laughs> like, I didn't want my life to fall apart. So, that's kind of proof that I have free will right there, because, anyways, I, yeah, yeah. I, st I stopped believing in free will for a while and things started to fall apart and the thing that kept it together was the will that I have to keep it together. Um, but it was difficult. It made things a lot more difficult than it seemed like it needed to be. Free will will make sense... This is, this is, a, this is stated from faith, but I believe that free will and destination, uh, predestination will make sense from a higher viewpoint. Um, and that in order to develop precognizance, which is the end state, um, well, I mean, there's no such thing as an end state, but it's, it's, it's the end state as far as I can see from here. And when I get to precognizance, then I'll figure out what I need to do from there. That, that might not even be in this lifetime, so that's fine. Okay, so... Pre-sentient sentiment, excuse me, is when you feel about a thing that's about to happen before it happens. Okay, so you have the emotional reaction to the future event. That's what pre-sentiment is. Now, they've, they've done scientific studies on pre-sentiment and found that it exists in all people and that um, it exists better. Like, uh, in meditate, people that meditate have more of it or, like, a better version of it. So, whereas most people experience an event emotionally, like, a half a second before it actually happens, the emotion starts. Medi and you can look this up. Um, meditators experience it, um, like, five, like, experienced meditators these numbers won't be exact, but it'll be like five seconds, okay? So, then from here on out, this is all hypothetical. Um, if we all have pre-sentiment, I believe that through paying attention to it, we can develop precognizance, which is knowing the thing before it happens. So, like, when I felt, I felt the feeling of having my it's time to get out of the shower alarm go off while I still had soap in my eyes and not being able to turn it off. And what I did is I rejected that feeling. I said, don't anticipate what's about to happen. But then it happened, and I fucking turned it off, and then I go, oh, shit, I was right. Like, that wasn't anticipation and, like, getting pulled out of the moment. That was me, act, my consciousness expanding to the point where I could actually feel five seconds ahead to the event that actually did happen. And the benefit of this is that it wasn't as jarring because I, I, I hate when that happens. So I'm out of time. Um, I'm literally running like 30, I've got 10 seconds before I run out of tape. Um, so hope you figured, hope you understood that.